Hey guys, welcome to my guide on how to play the role of captain in the video game Dreadhunger. When you're first starting out in Dreadhunger, you're learning what everything does and simply staying alive is tough. But playing the game gets almost impossible when you add in the intense pressure of other players expecting you to play in a certain way, depending on the role you've chosen for the game. But how in the world are you supposed to know what your character is meant to be doing? And how do you know where to go in the game to collect what you think you need to be collecting? Then depending on who the players you've happened to be matched with are, you risk being attacked or even killed should you not complete your character's role in the crew to an acceptable standard, leaving you feeling extremely hard done by and putting you off playing again. This video hopes to arm you with the information you need as a new player to perform your character's role well and decrease the chance that you'll be killed by aggressive crewmates. This guide is the first of eight guide videos. Each guide will focus exclusively on one of the eight Dreadhunger playable characters, covering exactly who the character is, what their role is on the ship, what other players will expect from them in-game, and give suggested day one pathing options for the character that you can try out in your own games. There will also be a section at the end where I give general advice and suggestions for playing the character as Thrall. It's important to mention that this video will not teach you how to play Dreadhunger itself, and it presumes that you have a basic understanding of the game. I'd highly encourage you take the time to watch my existing Dreadhunger guides that I have linked in the description below before continuing with this video. Now, with all of that said and done, let's get started. First up, what are the captain's identifying features? In other words, how can you tell that he's the captain and not one of the other characters? Well, he has an iconic blue jacket, and whilst he isn't the only character wearing blue on the crew, he stands out through his gold detailing on this jacket. He also has pretty epic sideburns and has an aged experience, pretty pompous face. When identifying him from afar, look for the body shape, namely his large pointed shoulders, narrowing down to his waist and thinner legs. In prison, his sleeves are blue with a gold edging around the wrist with bare hands. The captain starts the expedition with a repairable saber, which deals 16 damage to enemies it strikes while sharp, and 10 damage once blunt. The saber is arguably the best melee weapon in the game, and is exceptionally powerful when upgraded with a whetstone to deal 21 damage on each swing. He also starts with a lovely cup of tea, which when drunk provides warmth and a small amount of hunger. The captain's character bonus increases his ability to control the ship by 50%. Whilst all characters can drive the ship at the same speed, captain will have the easiest time maneuvering the ship around icebergs. As the captain of the expedition, the captain's primary role is to steer the ship through the Arctic and avoid the many icebergs blocking the way. But when the ship isn't moving, what should the captain be doing? Dreadhunger puts the crew up against the clock from word go, so you want to make the most of the time you've been given. So, head out into the Arctic and search for useful resources, namely coal, raw meat, wood, and iron scrap. Returning to the ship with any amount of these resources will always be helpful to the crew and increase the likelihood you'll win the game. Now, what your character role is and what other players expect from you doesn't always align. In the case of the captain, at the start of each expedition, it is a common expectation that the captain will be the player who stays on the ship to move it forward with the crew's starting coal. When playing the captain, I'd highly encourage you to fulfill this expectation by putting your starting coal in the boiler and lighting it up. Race up to the ship's wheel and drive the ship forward until the ship runs out of coal. Be sure to monitor how much coal actually goes into the boiler at the beginning of the game, and you can tell by the ship's coal dial in the bottom right hand corner. If it's half full, that is worth 6 coal, and there should be 8 or 9 starting pieces, so you can work out from there how much coal may be missing and communicate that to the rest of the crew. Be sure to hold down the shift key while you drive to boost the ship's maximum speed, which you can monitor on the right of the ship's wheel on the speedometer. 
you will know you're successfully boosting the ship if the speedometer surpasses a speed of 70 and heads into the red zone. The dial in the bottom right hand corner with a steam symbol on it next to the coal dial will also start filling up when you're successfully boosting the ship. Your goal whilst driving is to prevent this dial from ever completely filling up whilst maximizing the speed the ship is traveling at. Should this dial ever fill up completely, the ship's boiler will overheat and explode, destroying any fuel in the boiler, damaging the ship and anyone in the boiler room and the above captain's quarters. To control this overheating dial, release the shift and W key and press down the S key until you see the speedometer drop below 70. You will also hear a little pressure release sound when it does so. Then release the S key and press back down the W key to push the ship forward again. Don't forget to hold shift if you want to start boosting forward, but keep an eye on that overheating dial and make sure it isn't filling up too quickly. Do this over and over to maximize the ship speed without causing a setback for your crew. Now, because you have stayed on the ship and driven it forward at the beginning of the game, your fellow crewmates have run ahead and had first pick at what they want to loot. This of course means that when you finish driving and head out to explore the Arctic, you'll have a hard time finding useful loot, most likely ending up with nothing but leftovers. This sucks, but you can ask the other players to share what they found or search elsewhere for more useful loot. Now, whilst the captain's role largely centers around the movement of the ship, other players don't expect you to be on the ship's wheel ready to drive every time they return with coal, especially on the first day, given the lengths many captains have to go to just to gather useful loot. Many players will actually put the coal they found into the boiler and drive the ship forward themselves as it increases how many points they get for the match, and they won't even notice the captain isn't there. This gives the captain much more flexibility on the first day to spend time around other players, observing their actions, gathering information, and setting himself up for the match with weapons, additional storage, and health restoration items all whilst completing his secondary role as a resource gatherer for the ship. Returning with useful resources will build trust with your fellow crewmates and the time spent with other players will help greatly with the crew's goal of identifying the two thralls. I'm now going to run through some of the suggested day one parving options for the captain on each of the three maps of Dreadhunger. The Expanse, The Approach, and The Summit. Following these parving suggestions will maximize your productivity and help you to learn where useful resources are for future games. Let's start with the expanse. Put your starting coal into the boiler and move the ship forward as expected. Other crewmates will not leave as quickly as usual as it is a much longer swim to the first ice cap. So you will have more of an easier time catching up and actually finding loot on this map than the other two maps. Whilst driving, it's possible other players will return with fuel for the boiler. If they do, remain on the wheel and continue driving with this extra fuel. Once the ship comes to a rest, jump off the right hand side of the ship onto the ice cap and head down the right side of the map. Ignore the island on the left with the whale bones and head towards the small houses you can see down the right hand side. You might encounter a wolf on the way. Kill it and continue to move forward. You should also pass a small resource crate too. Loot it and take anything inside. Upon arriving at the houses, head into the furthest one which should have a stove. Turn it on for heat and gather the coal in the nearby sled. Next, head into the small gap in the mountains until you reach a very raggedy structure that I'm sure used to be a house. Gather the nearby resources, namely the wood, scrap and lead ingots and go to the workbench. Should luck be in your favor, craft the barrel with the supplies you gathered. A quick hint here, you can turn one iron scrap into two nails on the workbench. So a barrel just requires three wood, two lead ingots and two nails, which is of course just one iron scrap. Next, gather the coal from the two sleds around this raggedy house. And if you did manage to make a barrel, ensure that three of the coal pieces go into the barrel to help with your inventory management. Return to the ship with your saber, barrel, and three other pieces of coal, as well as any wood, scrap, or lead ingots you have left. I'd encourage drinking your tea that you started with on the walk back to the ship for warmth, or drink it a little earlier if you need the extra space in your inventory. 
The ship will likely have moved whilst you were away, but you shouldn't have that much of a problem making it back alive, especially if the ship came right side. But if it did go left side, you will have a longer run and it's possible you will get particularly cold, maybe losing a lot of health, but you shouldn't have a problem making it back to the ship alive. Once you arrive back at the ship, head into the captain's quarters and start up the heater to start regaining warmth in preparation for driving during the night. Put your coal into the boiler and ensure that you have removed the coal from your barrel and don't burn your barrel on accident. Drive the ship forward and ask the crew what path they'd like to take. Try to follow the suggested path as best you can without hitting icebergs. And don't be afraid to ask for a stew or lantern to be delivered to you on the wheel or ask for someone to trade spots with you should you get too cold. Do all of this and you've had a very productive first day. On the approach, I'd suggest a far more conservative approach? As the captain, you'll once again be expected to start up the boiler and drive the ship forward at the start of the match. However, on the approach, it is far more likely coal will be returned to you sooner rather than later. Whilst you drive, I'd highly encourage observing which players loot the nearby coal sleds and call out to them to return the coal right away or call out to others to then call out to them to bring that coal back right away. Remain on the wheel until you run out of coal with no new coal in sight. Your day one goal as the captain on the approach is to rally nearby crew who have had far more looting opportunities than you to return their findings to the ship. Escort players back if you have to and move the ship forward until as many of the first six coal sleds have found their way back into the boiler and you've moved forward a good distance. I'd encourage checking out the coal and supplies on the right side of the ship or tell another crewmate to go check them, though it's very possible other players have already looted them ahead of you. Honestly, do not be surprised if as the captain, you are unable to find any useful loot outside of some odd pieces of wood which you can burn in the boiler on the first day, but stick with the ship and ensure it's constantly moving forward. Ideally, coal will return from the very far left-hand side by nightfall, halfway through the night, hopefully in great quantities, and you will be able to drive the ship forward and consume a stew when the cook has completed his first batch. Observe who has not returned with coal you might have seen them loot on day one and speculate who the thrall is most likely to be. Since it's the approach, the ship should make a lot of progress and the crew should be quite far ahead, assuming thralls haven't run off with too much of the starting coal. Finally, on the summit, you will once again start the boiler up and move the ship forward as the captain. To be clear, you don't have to, but neglecting this starting expectation will cause problems right from the word go, possibly wasting starting coal as the crew bicker about who will drive in place of you, and it will make you appear very suspicious to your fellow crew when you're actually a crewmate. So drive the ship forward until you run out of coal as usual. It's unlikely anyone will return with much more more than a bit of wood or an odd piece of coal. But while you're driving, watch where the crew split off to. How many players are pushing down the left side and how many on the right? I'd encourage heading out in the direction that has the least players when the ship comes to a stop, which is most commonly the right hand side. Check the coal sled you encounter in the direction you chose and collect any wood that was left behind. Push up to the nearby campsite and scavenge around supply crates for the resources to make a barrel. Craft the barrel and head into the nearby cave where there should be three coal sleds with eight coal between them. You may have to fight two wolves in this cave if you are somehow the first player into the cave. It's quite likely the other players will already have looted the left side cave already, particularly the engineer tends to go there, grab coal and head back to the ship, but the right side cave coal is more likely to be there. Collect any resources you find, namely coal and wood they've excluded, including the wood that commonly spawns at the very back of each cave. Return to the ship with whatever you've managed to find and push the ship forward. There should be a lot of coal returning to the ship from other players, and you may find yourself on the wheel for quite some time. Communicate with your team. Ask for a stew to be delivered to the wheel and a lantern to be placed at your feet to maximize your driving time. Steering will get easier the more you play and the more you learn where icebergs are located. Drive the ship as far as you can with the ideal ship pathing going right side at that first fork on the summit in favor of streamlined coal and effective pathing for players returning to the ship. 
Obviously, this suggested summit pathing is largely based on the RNG of where your teammates choose to go and where you follow, but in general, you're aiming to return to the ship with useful resources and additional storage in the form of a barrel or possibly a backpack. Use the time spent with other players to observe and gather information on who is neglecting their role day one and who is particularly productive. This will help you build up a list of thrall suspects and a list of crew you believe you can trust early on. I'd encourage heavy communication and observation whilst you drive. Monitoring the comings and goings of the crew on the ship and keep a steady flow of information coming to you despite your hands being glued to the wheel. Finally, I've included a few general pieces of thrall advice when you're playing the captain. This advice will be for blending in as the captain, as any Tom, Dick or Harry can be an obvious, unproductive thrall who steals coal or just outright kills someone on the first day. Blending in takes a lot of practice, patience and understanding to pull off effectively, and learning this as a new player is rough, so I hope this advice helps. For thrall spells, I'd advise running Spirit Walk, Whiteout and Hush. Though Doppelganger is a solid spell too, it's just tough to use as the captain due to the easily identifiable saber that you're carrying around and might accidentally pull out in a moment of panic. These spells aim to provide you with easy to use, meaningful delays that you can learn to use effectively and at the right time, as well as Spirit Walk's movement utility. Now, understanding what the crew expect from you is massively important when attempting to blend in as a thrall. And in the case of the captain, driving the ship at the beginning of the match to an acceptable standard is critical as to not draw any unwanted attention to you early on. From there, the captain is effectively free from expectation as most crewmates won't need you to drive the ship for them. Once the ship comes to a stop, I'd encourage using thrall vision to observe where the players are spending time and spirit walk up to a lootable area that is not occupied by crewmates. Take the time to set up one or two totems, gather gunpowder either by destroying coal you find or looting ammo crates, and gather nearby iron scrap and wood. If you're lucky, you might find enough gunpowder to allow you to keep some of the coal you find to return to the ship, assisting in your blend. Try your best to ensure you aren't seen by any crewmates in this area. As soon as you're ready, or when your spirit walk is back up, spirit walk back to the ship and board, pronouncing your return whilst you do so. You should be back around the time the first day is coming to an end, and you can spend the night time sabotaging, making conversation, and loudly observing which crewmates haven't returned to the ship that day. Should you be asked what you've been doing, say something along the lines of, pretty much everything was already looted, but I've got some scrap and wood then proceed to hide it somewhere on the ship within audio range of anyone asking you, as hiding these resources on the ship is generally seen as a strong indicator that you're a crewmate. Eat a stew, possibly stealing a second or third one, depending on how easy it is to do so, and drive the ship forward when it started out. I'd encourage casting a whiteout when heading to the wheel and use the blindness caused by the whiteout to run into icebergs you can see ahead in your spirit vision. Try not to intentionally steer into them, rather generally guide into them if that makes sense. Once the ship is damaged and it's towards the end of the coal run, state that you are going to repair the ship, jump off the wheel and rush to the boiler vent in the captain's quarters to drop at least three gunpowder in before the boiler turns off. Ideally, no one will be watching it as the ship repairs are at the front of the ship where you hit the iceberg and vision will be blocked by the whiteout. Gather your scrap and wood, help repair, and cast a hush as soon as possible. Jump off the ship and communicate with your thrall teammate while the spell is active as no one can hear what you have to say and you have a direct global communication line to your thrall partner for a limited time. Be wary that crewmates can still see your actual physical lips on your character moving when you're talking during hush. So be extra careful who you choose to talk around during this time, or when hush ends, make sure you start singing a random song so it seems like you're just singing to yourself or something during hush. Be sure to ask your partner what spells they're running and tell them you plan on blending in during this hush call. The hush will run out and the ship should start back up again. Your sabotage will delay them while you're off boat gathering more gunpowder. Be sure to gather some coal where possible to return to the ship too. Your primary goal is to stall the ship as much as possible without giving away that it's you doing so. So from here on out, sabotage or overheat the boiler 
whenever you think you can get away with it. Hit the occasional iceberg without making it too obvious you're trying to turn into them. Your end goal is to remain a somewhat trusted crew member right up until the crew have reached the end of the map and are ready for Nitro. In a perfect world, you are a completely trusted crew member and you might even be trusted to carry the Nitro. Cast whiteouts as often as possible and hushes to prevent the crew from communicating with each other and delaying their productivity. Obviously, you can adjust this strategy as much as you like, but you can apply at least the day one part of this strategy to any of the maps. Keep in mind that as the captain, you have the easiest time turning the ship around. So if an opportunity arises, use the cover of a whiteout to turn the ship around and drive backwards, causing a major delay and headache for the crew to fix. However, doing this is quite difficult with observant crewmates on board and could out you as the thrall should you be caught even trying to do so. If you're questioned or attacked over anything that happens, ensure that your inventory is clean of thrall materials like gunpowder or poison and back yourself, exclaiming that you aren't thrall, possibly suggesting someone else who has been around many of the delays, stating that it is more likely that they are the thrall. At the end of the day, you want to be successful delaying the ship by any means necessary. And wasting the crew's time with arguments and infighting can be just as effective as a sabotage. Simply holding onto the coal you looted for an extra minute or two can make a big difference in the crew's productivity. And that's it. A complete guide to the role of captain for the brilliant game Dreadhunger. I hope this video has answered any of the questions you may have been wondering about, and you now feel prepared to play as the captain in your own games whilst being effective in the role. Don't be afraid to follow my suggested day one parthings in this video to learn the ropes as the captain, but observe the map around you as you play and try to memorize the locations of important resources like coal, food, wood, and iron scrap. Assert yourself as the captain and drive the ship as often as you can to learn the positions of the icebergs on each map and how to manage the overheating dial. Having a skilled driver makes a massive difference for the crew as they are able to maximize the ship's speed, avoid icebergs, and even drive during whiteouts. But that won't happen overnight, so take it one game at a time, and even throw in the occasional captain roleplay and boss your friends and fellow players around a bit, especially if they're trying to drive your ship when you're right there to do it yourself. I hope you enjoyed this first character guide for the captain, and please leave a comment on which Dreadhunger character you'd like a guide for next. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel as it really does help me out, as does leaving a like on the video. Thank you all very much for watching. Good luck with all your endeavors, and remember to think just a little bit different.